Hi and welcome. Today I will show you an overview of the technique that I use to shade a tin can and max with V-Ray. As always, you will gather your reference first and try to analyze it. As you can see, we have a aluminum base here and here. But the label, as you can see, looks very metallic. So we need to incorporate that. Another thing that I notice is the reflections, they are colored. As you can see here. This also indicates that this material is a metallic material because the highlights are tinted. So let, let's take a look at the shader and how it was built. At the very end we have a blend material. We have a amber occlusion layer which is not necessary. The amber occlusion layer is just a V-ray material which is set to black and a V-ray dirt that is um, being used as a mask. Okay, then we have the multi sub material. We have two materials. We have a shader for the aluminum and a shader for the label. Here they are ID1 and ID2. The aluminum shader is very easy to set up. If you look at the properties here, the diffuse has no color, which is a property of metal. Then we have the reflection. It's tinted um, towards the blue side, which is also a property of aluminum. And I decrease the reflection glossiness just a little bit. Don't forget to use the GGX BRDF, which is very important. And you can play around with the fall off of the uh, GTR. In case you're wondering, the fall off is this highlight, what you see here on screen. The lower you go, the bigger the highlight, uh, the, the gradient. The higher you go, the more sharper it becomes. In reference, by the way, this is not the best reference, but this is a brushed metal. So to do that, I just created a noise with a tiling of 400, played with the size and the noise threshold. I also played around with these colors here to um, change the intensity of the reflection just a little bit. The color here has also the same color of the reflection that is over here, which is not necessary if you don't want it. Then I also use the same noise into the bump just to give it a little bit of bump. That's the aluminum shader and that's it. If you're wondering, this is how it looks like, but I'm pretty sure you will not notice the, um, the brush metal. I'm using very low settings here because my computer just won't uh, survive. Okay, then we go to the label um, side of the shader. So we have the label here with a coating and it's going through a blend material. So on top of the coat uh, of the label, I'm using coat material. The coat material is just a reflection without the diffuse to give it a little bit more pop to the reflection and that's it. It's been driven by a fall map, which you can, you can draw a curve here to, to increase or decrease the intensity. Um, you can also change to uh, is the reflection more to the to the side or more to the front? That's what you can do with this follow up map. And if you want, you can even use the RGB if you want, but I didn't do that. So we have a coding layer. For the label side, um, it's just a texture going through a color correct in case you wanted to increase or decrease the value of the, of the texture here, um, which I do often, which I often do. Um, okay, then for the reflection, which is very interesting, I had a bug here, I, I think. If I just connect this here, this is what it looked like in the beginning of the shader tree. All right. And let me just remove this. Um, so for the reflection, this is odd, why is that? Okay. So for the reflection, you can just input the, the same texture for the reflection and you will see that the red side of the coke can 
it will be tinted red, which is what we want to give that metallic look. But it was not working in the beginning. So I don't know why, but I had to go towards another route. And that consisted me of using a composite map and it exists out of two layers. We have one layer which is tinting the can red and the coke is not being tinted. And then we have the second layer which is just a neutral uh, reflection with a mask. And the mask is just saying, hey, just take this part of the, of the label and tint it white. And then I just um, added it to the reflection slot. That's it. So it's a very simple shader. Um, the label with a coating going to a blend. Then we have the aluminum right here. And they all come together into this blend material, which I'm using a, a, um, an ambient occlusion uh, just to give it a little bit more depth. The end result is then this. And with a little bit of color correction, you can get uh, some interesting results. Then for the lighting, um, it's actually very simple. I just created this scene here um, to get a background. Then we have a spherical geometry. And I converted, converted it to a light and another light just on the other side. Um, the dome light is giving the overall lighting and color and these two are just um, uh, helping the, the model with having these, uh, these highlights on the sides just to separate from the background. When I rendered the image I brought it into Photoshop and at the beginning it was just like this. This is the raw render. I um, copy the, la the layer and I put it on color dodge. I played with the opacity. This layer here, um, if I just bring it all the way to 100, is the, the bloom layer, which you can also save in V-Ray. And I just added it on top of it. Um, you can play around with the opacity to say how much bloom that you want or not. It's up to you. And then I did a little bit of color correction and um, a vignette. A very simple scene, uh, very simple lighting and a very simple shader. I hope um, this can help someone. If not, then it's all right.